retro bass and kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than. Welcome back to Retro Bassin. Pretty excited today. Got a very special episode of Retro Bassin and one that I have been meaning to do for quite some time. To me, there is something special about a lure that promises to catch everything from bluegill to blue marlin and is perfect in the hands of every angler from the six year old novice to the pro. Quite frankly, there is not a lure that has that as seen on TV logo that I have not purchased at one time or the other. But today on Retro Bassin, I'm going to show you the top 10 gimmick lures of all time. Coming in at number 10 is a 1996 lure from Lumco products called the Lil Huey. This bait is marketed as five baits in one and it has an action supposedly that drives fish crazy. In reality, it's really just a mediocre crankbait with five uh, very unnatural colored inserts reminiscent of the color selector craze. The way the lure works is you take this upper shell off and replace it with any one of the five colored inserts that you want to add. According to the instructions for use, the way you fish this bait is actually not like a traditional crankbait, but rather you cast it out, you wait 10 seconds, and then reel it in with a series of short twitches and jerks. I've never fished with a little Huey myself, but I'm anxious to get out on the water and see if in fact it swims like an injured minnow. Bud, why, sir? Who remembers the Budweiser ad campaign from Budweiser back in 1995? It was really the first viral beer commercial that I remember, and I still remember those weird robotic frogs in the swamp uh, chirping to the tune of Budweiser. Really, it was no surprise that Budweiser tried to capitalize on the success of that ad campaign, and this is actually the first of two Budweiser lures on the top 10 gimmick list. So this is the Budweiser Talking Frog from Johnson Lures. The Budweiser Frog was actually based on the original Johnson Talking Frog. And the way that these lures work is they have an internal speaker and an internal battery system. When water hits the two contacts, as you see here, it actually activates the circuit. And this thing starts croaking. And this one starts saying Budweiser. This bait looks eerily similar to another frog that I've used quite a bit and that is the Doug Hannon frog bait. Now there is one difference on the Budweiser frog and I'll show you this. It's got a very high thick body that does not compress. And you can see there's not a ton of gap on the hooks. My batteries have long since died in this thing so I would have to open it up to replace the battery and get it working again, which I might do come frog season. But for now, we'll leave this Bud in the package. Long before the laser lure, there was the electronic lure from Viking Lures. It features live light action, which is basically a red battery powered light that shines whenever this bait hits the water. The bait runs on a pair of hearing aid batteries, which I imagine would make it pretty useful for any Miracle Ear users on the water. But other than that, I'm not too sure what this light does. It's hard to say if that flashing red light attracts bass or has them running for the grass flats. I do love the packaging of these baits though, and just the whole idea of incorporating batteries into lures. This is really the first one that I remember that had any mainstream success. It came in a number of different varieties. This is a popper, but there were also a number of different crankbaits, jerkbaits, and I think that's it. No, this is not a bass toy, but this is definitely one of my favorite gimmick baits of all time, the Power Pack Minnow. Mechanical lures have been around for decades, but really this is the first one that I remember that had any major mainstream success. Developed by Frank G. Pierce in Dallas, Texas in 1987, the Power Pack lures hit shelves with an infomercial to boot. The way this lure works is pretty interesting. You pull the string, which happens on the back cast, like such. When this bait hits the water, it vibrates, and it really does send a nice ring of ripples all around the bait. Now, when the vibration stops, just pop it like you would a pop bar or a hula popper, and 
pulls the string again. The bait came in a number of different colors. I really like the clear over here and this Blackshore Minnow. The success of the Power Pack Minnow led to this, which is the Power Pack Frog, which has a pair of soft kicking legs. It works the same way. If you pull the string, the legs start kicking. Everybody remembers their first kiss, and for me, this lure will always have a very special place in my heart. The first five pound bass I ever caught was on a power pack lure of fish in a farm pond on the Delaware Eastern Shore. I still remember flipping that bait in. I had no clearance. I had trees all around. This thing buzzed for about three seconds and that fish crushed it. Ever since then, I have been trying to recreate that moment, albeit unsuccessfully, maybe this summer. <laughs> Developed by angler Jeff Mancini, the Mighty Bite promised to be the future of fishing in its infomercial. Touted as the world's first five cents lure, the Mighty Bite promised to deliver scent, sound, smell, taste, and touch. First thing you notice with a Mighty Bite is a signature bite and blood mark here. Now, I don't know if this looks like a fish that just got attacked or a fish that's got like fisteria or some sort of fungus infection. Let's break down these five senses real quick. First off, from a sight perspective, it looks like a cheap swim bait. Nothing crazy there, except for this bite mark, which again, I don't know if that's gonna be a benefit or not. As far as touch, it feels like any other soft plastic bait, so no real surprise there. When it comes to scent, sound, and taste, it does have a chamber you can put in a rattle or you could put in some fish scent. Again, things you could do with any other soft plastic bait. This really did make the rounds on the as seen on TV market. And for 1995, you could get the 100 piece set, which basically consisted of a bunch of junk and 10 of these swim baits. Sometime around 1986, Bill Dan set out to develop a very special bait. He wanted a bait that was long, slender like an eel, but had a crankbait head. After a few years of research and product testing, Bill came out with this, the Dance's Eel by Keeper Bait Company. According to Bill, this was the lure he wished for his entire fishing career, and it worked even better than he imagined. I have done a fair bit of fishing with Dance's Eel, both in the keeper bait version and the newer version from Yum. One of the interesting things about this bait is it doesn't necessarily fish the way that you think it would. For one, unlike most crankbaits, it sinks. This bait from a structure standpoint is really quite unique. It does have a crankbait standard lip here, which dives to about six foot. It's got a soft head, no rattle. Comes with a single treble hook and on to the eel tail. The way I typically fish this, I'll either fish it, I'll cast it out, and reel it in on a steady retrieve. It'll run at about six foot deep, and if you don't fish it too quickly, that tail has a really nice serpentine action. Another way you can fish Dance's eel is to cast it out, let it work like a countdown bait, and reel it in slow at the depth you want. And thirdly, you can jig this thing off the bottom, almost like a worm. Now, that treble hook, Eh, maybe not the best idea, but the versatility of this bait is absolutely pretty cool. Back when Bill was promoting his Fish Formula Sparkle Scales, they had some pretty cool deals where if you bought a Dance's Eel, you got a free bottle of Sparkle Scales. It's not so sparkly anymore. I don't know why. I felt a little bit bad putting Dance's Eel in the gimmick category. But I don't see a ton of pros fish with anything that looks even remotely similar to Dance's Eel. But maybe they should be. It's time for the second Budweiser bait in our list of the top 10 gimmick lures of all time. Originally developed by Jack Ward in 1975, the Head and Big Bud has to be one of the craziest looking lures that I've ever seen. Collectors know this profile very well. It is essentially a weird Budweiser can shaped lure with a crankbait head, sort of an odd lip, and a single blade on the back. 
by the way, with no swivel, so it doesn't even spin. This bait is 100% gimmick. It fishes really, really weirdly. It's got a rather long lip, but it does not dive very deep. It almost has sort of a rolling motion to it. I've caught a few fish on this thing, but, but no monsters, truth be told. But you just have to love the iconic look of the head and big bud. From 1977 on, had to work with a couple of lure companies in Japan to continue production of the head and big bud, including Smith Company and Olympic Lures. Japan really took the head and big bud craze to the next level, and they produced hundreds of different colored baits with internal rattles, dice, even little mini soccer balls. It was pretty wild. Here's a camo big bud. And here's one with a couple of dice. I've always been a Coors kind of guy, so I tend to prefer the Coors Original and the Coors Light Big Buds. I can't say how effective the Big Bud ever was at catching fish, but one thing you can say, it was definitely the king of lures. <laughs> and then there were three. Number three in the list of the greatest gimmick lures of all time has to be Roland Martin's helicopter lure. This is 100% one of the goofiest looking baits you will ever see. The way this lure is designed, it does have three propellers, sort of like a helicopter. When you cast the bait out, these propellers will slowly spin around like this, and that lure will rotate through the water. First off, any soft plastic bass bait that comes with a swivel should raise some red flags. I have fished this thing a little bit. One of the things that happens for me is even with this swivel spinning, you can imagine you've got a bait on the other end of your line that every time you reel the handle, it makes a couple rotations. It's gonna be line twist city before you know it. Roland designed this bait working the grass mats and hydrilla pads down in Florida. And for that, it might've worked great. There's actually some really good video of this thing going right over pads. When you hit a hole in the pads, you let it drop and it helicopters down. In those applications, this absolutely could be an effective bait. But just like any good infomercial, if it can catch bass, well, then it better be able to catch a blue marlin. And that's where I think this bait definitely jumped the shark. It's not a saltwater bait. It's not an open water bait. It is a bait for very specific applications. I know that when he gets together with his fishing buddies, Bill Dance and Jimmy Houston, they absolutely destroy him about the helicopter lore. But you'll get none of that here. Roland, congratulations. Number three on the best gimmick lures of all time. I wish that would spin. That swivels just... Uh. Banjo time. I totally jack that up. Endorsed by the fishing show host with the greatest name in the history of fishing, Babe Winkleman, the banjo minnow is one of the most successful as seen on TV lures of all time. In the infomercial, the claims are quite bold. On one hand, it's the greatest fishing lure ever created and the first ever genetic response lure. I don't know what that means. But at the heart of it is a very well thought out bait, which works quite well in a lot of applications. Designed by tournament angler Wayne Hockmeyer, who by the way has like the second greatest name ever in the history of fishing, this bait was designed to emulate a wounded minnow. One of the unique things about the banjo minnow is that the majority of the soft plastic bait is unimpeded by hooks or anything else. This lure fish is somewhere in between a soft plastic jerk bait and a magic shad from Lake Fork Lures. Cast the bait out, reel it in, kill it, it sinks, reel it in again. It does have a really nice motion to it, all said and done. And the kit comes with a fair number of lures in the back, and also some more inside, all for that magic assay on TV price of $19.95. According to Babe, I guarantee the banjo minnow will catch you more fish. 
And if not, paddle faster. Get it? And that brings us to number one. There have been many imitators over the years and there's been even some lures that have come close. But nothing will ever match the success, in my opinion, of the number one gimmick lure of all time. And of course I'm talking about Alex Langner's Flying Lure. As chronicled in Alex's book, Flying Lure Fishing, in the early morning hours of December 21st, 1991, aired that first ever 30 minute infomercial on the Flying Lure. If you ever get a chance to watch that original Flying Lure infomercial, and I'll drop a link to it down below in the description, it is truly a marketing masterpiece. It had everything from fishing show host Don Meisner's glowing reviews of the bait. It had angler testimonials, anglers of all skill sets who all caught monster fish. And let's not forget that famous footage of that hog trough where you had a wolf pack of lunker bass attacking this bait again and again and again. Alex came up with the design for the bait and he's chronicled this over many interviews and in his book as well. He was a tournament angler and he was tired of not being able to get to those fish deep within cover. Most baits, as you know, you cast the edge of cover, they drop straight down and maybe a little bit toward the angler. Well, the flying lure, when it hits the water on a slack line, it glides away. So here's how the lure worked. First off, you had sort of a flattened tube and also a jig head, which you insert into the tube. So we'll put one together now. So the jig head goes into the tube, pops it out. And there you go. Your line tie is on the bottom of the bait. And when you cast it out, because of the weight of the bait and also this flat bottom, it swims away from you. Now where this bait might have jumped the shark, and, and this is understandable, first off, anytime something catches everything from bass to blue marlin, it's a little bit suspect. Likewise, fishing a lure that swims away from you on a slack line, well that might not be best for novice or beginner anglers, which to be frank was the target audience of the flying lure. Kits like this are still available today at the flying lure website. I'll drop a link down below. And one thing that, um, I didn't realize, but some of you might have seen my review of the Instant Fisherman, which I said was maybe the worst rod ever. That's actually from the designers of the Flying Lure. So hopefully this will make it up for a little bit. This is a great bait. It still works. It's always worked. No more Flying Lure shaming. I'm serious. No more. It's a good bait. Do me a favor. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know which of these 10 lures you want me to fish with first. We've got some days coming up on the water and that's a lot to choose from. Uh, if you enjoy what you saw today, hit that subscribe button and also that bell icon. That way you'll get notified when we upload a new video. Until next time, fish it old school.